In the late 1980s, scientists would discover the endocannabinoid system within the human body. Now this would lay waste to claims for decades. The cannabinoids had no beneficial purpose for human consumption. Obesity, particularly abdominal obesity and the associated cardiometabolic complications are critical areas of investigation. The endocannabinoid system helps to regulate the central control of energy balance and peripheral metabolic processes, both of which may contribute to cardiometabolic risk factors. The endocannabinoid system, or ECS, influences multiple physiologic processes. This intricate system modulates energy intake, as well as nutrient transport, metabolism, and storage. The ECS regulates these processes through endogenous ligands, such as anandamide and 2-arachidonyl glycerol, and the CB1 receptor. CB1 receptors are located in the brain, digestive tract, muscle and adipose tissue. Integration of these central and peripheral ECS components is achieved through neuronal and hormonal signaling. Within the brain, CB1 receptors are among the most abundant G-protein coupled receptors. However, in contrast to classical signaling, where information travels from pre to post synaptic neurons, the ECS uses retrograde signaling. The information travels from post to presynaptic neuron. Let's take a closer look at this mechanism using a glutamatergic neuron model. When an action potential reaches the axon terminal, membrane depolarization triggers the release of glutamate. Glutamate binds to postsynaptic glutamate receptors, inducing calcium channels to open. During periods of intense neural activity, calcium accumulates in the postsynaptic neuron. This calcium buildup causes the synthesis and release of endocannabinoids from membrane lipids. Diffusing across the synaptic cleft, the endocannabinoids bind to the CB1 receptor, activating the G proteins. Activation influences ion flow. The result, suppression of presynaptic neurotransmitter release. Endocannabinoids are subsequently taken back into the cell and enzymatically degraded. In addition to acting as neural messengers, endocannabinoids mediate paracrine and autocrine signaling in adipocytes, hepatocytes, and other cells. endocannabinoid system activity in the central nervous system regulates food intake. For example, ECS stimulation by hunger and fasting signals stimulates appetite and increases the palatability of food. Endocannabinoids slow gastric emptying and GI transit and appear to stimulate secretion of ghrelin, a neuropeptide that increases appetite and food intake. After eating, Cholecystokinin in the duodenum triggers satiety signals. Subsequently, ECS activity is decreased through suppression of CB1 expression. An increase in the adiposity hormone leptin decreases endocannabinoid levels in the hypothalamus and decreases food intake. ECS regulation of peripheral metabolism influences energy balance. Stimulation of the ECS increases food intake and adiposity. Conversely, blocking CB1 receptors reduces food intake and adiposity. In the liver, ECS stimulation can lead to lipogenesis through the activation of hepatic lipogenic enzymes and increased fatty acid synthesis. Chronic stimulation of the ECS is associated with dyslipidemia. Activation of CB1 receptors increases expression of SREBP1C, a lipogenic transcription factor, and increases fatty acid synthesis. SREBP1C increases production of lipogenic enzymes, ACC1, and fatty acid synthase.
Increased fatty acid synthesis can lead to production of large triglyceride-rich VLDL. Large triglyceride-rich VLDL sets the stage for the atherogenic lipid profile of small, dense LDL, decreased levels of atheroprotective HDL, and overall increases in cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Adiponectin, another hormone secreted by adipocytes, regulates lipid and glucose metabolism. Adiponectin is believed to regulate fatty acid oxidation in muscle and liver, thus improving insulin sensitivity. CB1 receptor stimulation in adipocytes reduces adiponectin, while CB1 blockade increases adiponectin synthesis. Metabolic dysregulation leads to a constellation of symptoms including abdominal obesity, atherogenic dyslipidemia, hypertension, insulin resistance, prothrombotic state, and pro-inflammatory state. As basic and clinical research progresses, we will continue to increase our understanding of the central and peripheral endocannabinoid system and its role in the regulation of metabolic function. There you have it, in one plain video. Cannabis could be mankind's symbiotic plant. Until next time, I'm William Martin with Cannabis Science.